in this class we are going to discuss about benign nephrosclerosis uh, as the name is suggests there is sclerosis in the kidney which occurs in the benign phase of hypertension benign phase of hypertension okay in hypertensive individuals even though it may be under control but over a long uh, long term it is going to cause some damage to the kidneys okay that pathological condition is called benign nephrosclerosis uh, you can clearly see in this picture see this is the glomerulus and this is a renal arteriole so this arteriole has become sclerosed sclerosed means see the the lumen has become narrow but the thickness has become so increased uh, because of that there is reduced lumen and the blood flow through it also becomes less when the blood flow is less that is it causes renal ischemia and uh, over long term it causes a small contracted kidney the kidney becomes so small okay so let's understand it with brief now so what is nephrosclerosis it is associated with hypertension that means because of hypertension there is nephrosclerosis and because of nephrosclerosis there will be hypertension that means hypertension can be the cause as well as the consequence of nephrosclerosis okay nephrosclerosis let's understand now that means there is nephrosclerosis means there is majorly there is sclerosis of renal arteriole okay let's take this as a renal arteriole like this okay let's take a small section like this so because of hypertension because of the effect of hypertension some endothelia are going to get damaged there will be endothelial damage okay let's take like this there is endothelial damage now you know obviously whenever there is endothelial damage some platelets are going to get attached to it okay some fibrinogen is going to get attached to it okay so this further action accentuates the damage to the endothelium see this endothelium is damaged now but what this platelet does now it releases certain growth factors like platelet derived growth factor and all this causes proliferation in the tunica intima and tunica media tunica intima means the innermost layer tunica media means the middle layer so there is proliferation of what fibroblasts there is proliferation of what smooth muscle cells okay so because of this proliferation the lumen is going to get narrow the lumen is going to get narrowed okay see here so this is the normal thing renal arteriole because of hypertension so there is proliferation of re smooth muscles and fibroblasts okay and you can clearly see because of this the lumen is bec has become narrow see the lumen here okay compare the lumen here the lumen has become very narrow when the lumen is narrow the renal blood flow the blood which is flowing through it is becomes less becomes less okay that means there is renal hypoperfusion but what the kidney thinks that thinks that there is insufficient blood flow in me let me activate the renin angiotensin system which will further increase the blood pressure understood hypertension was the initiating cause and it finally became the effect also okay because of renal arteriosclerosis the blood pressure again increased and it became a self perpetuating cycle self perpetuating cycle that means imagine you are going at a very high speed instead of pressing the brake you press the accelerator okay this is what happened with the kidney okay it was because of hypertension instead of uh, reducing it the kidney actually activated the renin angiotensin system and it further increases the blood pressure okay right now let's understand the pathogenesis so what happens because of uh, hypertension hypertension causes what it damages the endothelia damages the endothelia and the endothelia also reacts how by sclerosis sclerosis means there is thickening of tunica intima and tunica media okay there is uh, increased what myofibroblastic tissue myofibroblastic tissue means increased smooth muscle cells increased smooth muscle cells increase in the fibroblasts okay what is the reason for that i, to I told you because of endothelial uh, injury platelets will get activated they will release some growth factors platelet derived growth factor this growth factor causes this proliferation but what happened because of proliferation the lumen became narrow that's the only thing that happened now okay see th there is this is the thickness of the blood vessel right here okay because of proliferation of smooth muscles 
and the fibroblasts okay that why that that's what i told you there is myofibroblastic proliferation and the lumen has become narrow even there are chances of thrombosis even there are chances of thrombosis because even when the endothelia is damaged the coagulation system is going to get activated okay right what is the other thing the second point there is hellenization of arterial arteriolar walls hellenization see when there was hypertension and the endothelial damage was there some of the fibrinogen leaked outside some of the fibrinogen what is fibrinogen it is a plasma protein it got leaked outside when it got leaked outside how do you see it in a microscope you look you, you see it as a pinkish halen appearance so that itself is called hellenization 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 means because of leakage of plasma protein like fibrinogen due to endothelial injury okay the endothelia got damaged because of that the fibrinogen got leaked and this uh, gave an appearance of hellenization hellenization both this 1 and 2 what is 1 plus 2 see here this is what i termed hellenization okay leakage of plasma proteins and hellenization okay right we understood what is the result now we understood two points one is thickening of media and intima second is hellenization okay what is the result what is the result? What is 1 plus 2? Do not say me 3. 1 plus 2 is thickening of intima and media plus hellenization. What does it do? It results in reduced lumen of the arterioles. The lumen is going to get reduced. It results in renal ischemia and it ca causes what? Chronic ischemia causes infarction. Infarction becomes, infarction will be replaced with not the original tissue, it will be replaced with sclerosed tissue or fibrotic tissue. Okay, that means there is glomerulosclerosis, there is sclerosis in the interstitium, the tubules are going to get damaged. Okay, finally, the kidney becomes shrunken. Okay, and finally, kidney is going to get shrunken. See the morphology, there is moderate reduction in the size because there is this is benign phase of hypertension. If it is associated with diabetes, if it is associated with some other kind of vascular diseases, then the degree of damage will be uh, it will be varying. Okay, but here let us consider it is just as a benign phase of hypertension, the appearance will be leathery, leathery fine granularity. What is the result? What do you, why it occurs? Because of cortical scarring, that means the renal infarction, small, small renal infarction, okay, the damage to the renal arterioles, it causes renal infarction. So, this results in some leathery fine granularity, okay, right. What is the histology? Let us take the normal one and let us understand the pathological one. So, this is the normal glomerulus. Okay, this is how it looks like. There are normal tubules. Okay, these are the normal blood vessels. Okay, these are the normal blood vessels. Let's take like this. Okay, but what happens in uh, nephrosclerosis is the uh, glomerulus is going to get sclerosed. See here, there is glomerulosclerosis. This is glo glomerulosclerosis. Okay, glomerulosclerosis. What about the tubules? The tubules are also atrophied. The tubules are also atrophied. The glomerulus is also sclerosed, but the main change lies where? The main change lies in the blood vessels, renal arterioles. Okay, there is see here like onion skinning. Onion skinning. What is the re reason? There is thickening of intima and thickening of media. And again, you can also show some hellenization. You can also show hellenization, hellenization. Okay. Because of all this, what happens in, in ischemia and infarction? So, in the interstitium, there will be interstitial fibrosis, okay? Interstitial fibrosis, okay? So, this is uh, what is happening in the uh, nephrosclerosis. So, what are the clinical features? See, just mild hypertension, even uh, over a long term, can cause some kind of damage. But in an, an isolated nephrosclerosis without any comorbidities like diabetes and all, Rarely it causes renal efficiency, it is unusual, but when the hypertension is not under control, when it uh, rises beyond 200 systolic, okay, in such conditions or when it is associated with diabetes mellitus or when uh, there is some renal infection or when it turns to malignant hypertension, then only it is going to uh, get affected, okay, that, then only it is going to get renal failure. What I am going to tell is the benign nephrosclerosis rarely uh, causes any uh, renal failure uh, uh, means only when it is associated with other comorbidities or when the this benign hypertension 
it becomes uncontrolled and when it becomes accelerated or malignant hypertension then only it's going to cause some damage okay right 